LGBT individuals, for their families, and for the health care professionals who take care of them. And um, you're going to hear more about our programs and our successes in just a few minutes. But uh, what I would like to do next is to introduce um, a dignitary in our crowd uh, to say a few words, uh, Dr. Bashara Shukher, who is the commissioner of the Chicago Public Health Department. He was appointed in 2009. Uh, he's a family medicine practitioner, and among his many accomplishments, he uh, launched the first citywide health initiative called Healthy Chicago. And uh, that includes a robust 22-point LGBT community action plan. We are happy to have him as part of our community, and we'll hope he'll be part of the Glamo family as well. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Schumacher. Thank you, uh, Desi. Good evening, everyone. It's great to see uh, everyone here. I know uh, many are from Chicago, but the overwhelming majority are visiting. We make sure that you have great weather for the rest of the <laughs> evening and, and for tomorrow. Make sure you enjoy what the city has to offer. Make sure you enjoy our lakefront, our parks, a lot of our smoke-free environments, and our restaurants that we inspect regularly from the health department. <laughs> I, I do wanna, uh, on behalf of the mayor, again, I wanna welcome everyone. And I wanted to share just three quick things about our health department. So we, uh, we are one of the largest health departments in the country, and just like Desi mentioned, uh, Mayor Emanuel released our public health agenda back in August of 2011, where we've identified 12 public health priorities. We've set measurable targets for each one of those priorities. And we've identified over 200 strategies that we wanted to implement, mostly from policy systems and environmental change to really make Chicago the healthiest city in the nation. So when we released that public health agenda, it was an overarching public health agenda for the whole city, but we knew that there are populations within the city that, uh, that are impacted most by disparities and we needed to focus specifically um, on those populations. And very, very soon after we've released the public health agenda uh, for the city, we've assembled a group of LGBT advocates, a group of LGBT leaders, a group of organizations that are serving the LGBT community, and we've developed the LGBT Community Action Plan. We're very excited to be one of the very, very few health departments in the country that actually have a very specific agenda to address the LGBT health needs because we know the disparities exist there and we know that we can make a difference. So in that uh, LGBT Community Action Plan, the mayor released that back in March of 2012, we've identified 22 very specific strategies to address the disparities that we're seeing between the LGBT community and the rest of our communities in Chicago. And those strategies vary from um, interventions and programs around smoking, around obesity, um, around pregnancy, around um, uh, uh, raising children, around bullying, but also looking around policy issues, looking at the way we collect data, the way we ask about health assessment status and making sure that we're asking about gender identity and, and sexual orientation. So we developed those very specific strategies and we are very happy that, that we've announced and we've um, created an LGBT community, um, an LGBT Health Advisory Council. I see uh, Travis, who's on the, on the council. This is a multidisciplinary council that advises the health department on the implementation of the LGBT Community Action Plan. Um, Travis and a couple other doctors are on the committee, but we also have uh, attorneys, we have nurses, we have community advocates, we have uh, um, um, uh, personal trainers that are really driving how we're implementing those strategies in Chicago to close the gap and disparities um, that we're seeing in the LGBT community. And finally, the last thing I want to mention is as, as a department, we really want to focus on, um, on programmatic interventions. We have to focus on public health issues, uh, but we don't shy away from taking stands on policy issues. Um, a lot of, um, you know, obviously there's great support in Chicago for marriage equality. Uh, but I'm very, very pleased that our department is the only department in the country that took a stand in making the public health case for marriage equality. And together with the LGBT Health Advisory Council, we were very, very vocal about making the case, the public health case, for marriage equality. A lot of us think about marriage equality as a uh, civil rights issue, which is 
uh, which is great, but we were very clear about making the public health case for marriage equality. So I wanna um, have thank everybody um, on that LGBT Health Advisory Council that are really driving the implementation. I wanna welcome everybody here today. I wanna thank you, Desi, thank you, uh, Hector, for uh, hosting this event. Thanks to Northwestern for hosting this event here for us. Uh, make sure you enjoy your stay in Chicago and uh, have a great evening, thank you.
LGBT people, how to welcome them into their clinical spaces, and how to address LGBT health issues. Of course, our annual conference is the largest scientific gathering devoted to LGBT health issues in the country. That's one of the primary ways in our signature event in terms of education work. And we also have a webinar series that we've been working on for the last year. Um, and Amy Wilson Strong, one of our board members, is one of the primary architects of that. Um, and we're about to have on July 11th our third part in this webinar series, which is going to be devoted to the care of transgender patients. Um, and so if you're interested in that, please let us know. We also do patient education and referrals. We have a great resource called the Top 10 Health Issues You Should Discuss with Your Provider. If you're gay, if you're a lesbian, if you're transgender, or if you're bisexual. And we just recently revised this series. And it's really about empowering patients to be able to talk to their providers about the health issues that affect them. And it's also a great tool to help educate providers around the issues if they're uh, unfamiliar with the health issues that affect our community. We promote research, um, and one of the primary ways that we do that is through our Lesbian Health Fund, which provides small grants to researchers to look into health issues affecting lesbians and sexual minority women. These are uh, research grants that help uh, researchers look at test to help test uh, concepts and collect pilot data, which then can be leveraged into larger grants, larger research grants from institutions like the National Institutes of Health. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the slide about the Lesbian Health Fund, but I do have an update um, about um, LHF. We have provided more than uh, $900,000 to fund 100, uh, more than 100 studies in the lesbian health research. And then our last primary, of work, primary area of work is advancing public policy. And I think all of you know that any day now, we should expect a decision from the Supreme Court um, in the Prop 8 case, uh, which is the marriage case in California, and in the challenge to the Defense of Marriage Act. And as Dr. Shukar had pointed out, um, civil rights issues are not just about equality, they are issues that affect the health and well-being of LGBT people. And that's really the angle that Glenn takes in terms of our public policy. So we were able to submit amicus briefs in both of those cases that describe <coughs> the negative health consequences of the denial of marriage to same-sex couples and their families. Uh, research and evidence that we put forth in a, um, in a report called Same-Sex Marriage and Health, which we've used in other areas to advance marriage equality. And then we've also included in that amicus brief the science around how sexual orientation um, is biological, hereditary, um, and a, a factor of genetics. Uh, all of which are, are important um, in terms of the equal protection analysis that the Supreme Court will look at uh, when it ultimately decides these cases. And we've submitted amicus briefs recently, joined amicus briefs re recently in a case involving a transgender woman who was denied sexual reassignment surgery um, in, by the Massachusetts Department of Corrections. Uh, she's an inmate there. Um, and in that brief, we supported uh, the, uh, the standards of care that the World Professional Association for Transgender Health um, uh, have put out that sex reassignment surgery is medically necessary, a position that the American Medical Association also supports. We've also submitted a brief, or joined a brief recently in a case involving an HIV positive man who's about to be deported. Um, and the judge, um, and the immigration law judge there said that uh, this person was a danger to the community because he was HIV positive. And what we did in that brief, along with many others, is to present the science around the treatment of HIV and the transmission of HIV so that we could dispute the notion that uh, someone with HIV is a danger to the community. Our advocacy is at the state level as well. We're supporting legislation in California to include LGBT health in the cultural competency requirements that the state already uh, requires of its healthcare providers and then we also supported efforts recently to have um, grassroots efforts to ensure that Benjamin, Dr. Benjamin Carson, who, as many of you know, uh, made some very derogatory and disparaging remarks about LGBT people, uh, essentially equating um, LGBT people and the LGBT community to uh, be 
bestiality and um, pedophilia. Um, he was scheduled to speak um, as a commencement speaker of Johns Hopkins and as a keynote speaker um, at the AADA, the American Academy of Physician Assistants. So the members of those communities rallied to make sure that Dr. Carson was not going to be able to speak at those events. We have one of the leaders of that effort here, Paul Street. And Glamis sent letters to both those institutions supporting those efforts to make sure that uh, there was not a platform for uh, that kind of discussion of LGBT issues. I have a friend, uh, uh, not really a friend, a Congress member, um, uh, but a member of Congress who I know who often says that you don't have a seat at the table, you're on the menu. And what Glamma does is bring all of you, our health professional members, um, to that table and claim our rightful seat at that table. So whether it's when the Secretary of the Health uh, Department of Health and Human Services calls on LGBT leaders to discuss uh, potential um, uh, potential areas that the department should fo focus on in terms of LGBT health. We plan is there. Whether it's the National Institutes of Health uh, hosting its uh, Eliminating Health Disparities Conference and having the first ever LGBT health workshop at that conference, Glamo is there presenting. Whether it's when the White House calls or um, a meeting on strategy related to HIV, Glamit is there at the seat at the table, and now proclaiming our seat within the American Medical Association. And it's really a great day for our community and for LGBT health in general. And what all of you do is support that vision that we have for, for this organization, a vision where LGBT health issues are not only discussed, but appropriately addressed in the halls of government, whether that's at the federal, state, or local levels, in healthcare institutions and hospitals, in the training of health professionals, and the continuing education of health professionals, and of course in the waiting rooms, in the offices of providers. All of you play a significant role in making that happen, and I want to thank you for your support of Glamma and all of our work. different specialties, all different areas. 
areas and facets of the health profession, of health professional realm. And even for those who aren't health professionals, you can be members too. Uh, as long as you're committed or sure you're committed to supporting and moving forward uh, improvements in the LGBT health community. Because the health of one community, as we know, affects the health of all others. So very simply, thank you for coming. Uh, but we hope this isn't the last part of the conversation, but instead an initiation of the conversation that will move forward. Hopefully that will move forward in whatever way you choose once you become a member. Uh, we've laid out lots of different ways to be involved, and it takes lots of different areas of expertise for which all of you represent. Uh, so for those of you who are members, thank you. We look forward to you extending your membership in the future. For those of you who aren't members yet, we look forward to receiving your membership application later on this evening. The process is really <laughs> Uh, that said, again, thank you for coming. Uh, there's lots of great work that has been done, but there's still lots of work that needs to be done in the future. So we look forward to partnering with you and collaborating with all of you to make those accomplishments happen. Welcome to Chicago. Glad the weather's cooperating. Enjoy the rest of your time here, and have a safe trip back home. Thank you.